We cover a lot of ground in this video on FTX and LS payment of $12.7 billion. Where is that, I wonder? The source of funding is Ripple. Speaking, the CTO says that Bank of America's XRP can be used for Ripple payments, which is the newest craze in town. Identify them by guessing who they are. Adore XRP and Ripple I have a video that will astound you, and to top it all off. That's correct, Al. The man who is going to speak to us is the one and only, the mythical legend, the stunningly gorgeous lawyer from San Francisco. You got that, people. All right, please take a seat without further ado. Sit back, unwind, and grab a good adult for yourself. Drink, and how about we pay with Bitcoin? 6,697 is rising right before our eyes and has increased by 5.72% during the last day. Ethereum is up and running at 2,636. 7.58% of the US dollar is leaving the dollar packets of both the US dollar and the US dollar cent. Not bad for 58.5 cents, making some progress returning to 60, let's. Come on, let's break 66. First, let's smash through 69 and then soar past 75. What is the sound of that? Although it appears to be down 4.82%, the previous hourly chart of the total cryptocurrency market cap shows that it is trying to turn back to the green side. I swear to you that 2 trillion 142 billion unfortunately, FTX will have to pay $12.7 billion as part of the CFT settlement to the court. Al and FTX reached a settlement in which Al is prohibited from owning any digital assets. Commodity trading, commonly known as the CFTTC, states the proposed deal was first submitted early this summer, but was awaiting a judge's sign-off on FTX and ALA will pay roughly $8.7 billion and then an additional $4 billion in disregard as part of the settlement for a lawsuit involving commodities, which include Bitcoin and Ether. I'd like to know where the $13 billion comes from, as it seems like a significant amount. Is this the result of politicians utilizing public funds to fund long Bitcoin and Ethereum, and if so, where is the $13 billion? Coming from there is just crazy. Hey, give me $13 billion of you, and I'll never bother you again. With that $13 billion, I'll purchase a whole freaking island or several islands, and I'll even throw my own island jumping party. David Schwartz, the man behind the myth, is the CTO of Ripple. The myth he mentions regarding the company's capacity to make Ripple payments using XRP following the SC case SEC's case injunction says that David Schwartz, the CTO of Ripple, clarified whether or not a payment company can still use XRP for its Ripples. Payment transactions after the SEC lawsuit's injunction recall from Schwartz's comments in response to criticism and the community figure scam detective that Judge Torres not only fined Ripple $125 million for breaking security regulations, but also issued an injunction prohibiting B. Ripple from breaking security laws, going forward by selling institutional XRP sales. It says that because this portion of the decision is unclear, there has been discussion about it particularly to those who are not legally allowed astute individuals such as myself were most recently conned by detectives who proposed that the injunction prevents Ripple from utilizing old transactions in the U.S., pointing out that old is now a component of the recently relaunched Ripple payment service. Blah blah blah, to which David Schwartz replied, there is a distinction, according to Schwartz. The Ripple CTO's remark suggested that there is a distinction between a business using XRP for its payment services and selling XRP to institutions. Thus people search for the on-demand liquidity workflow, and XRP can be utilized for Ripple's payment services. Can Ripple continue to sell XRP to institutions? No, but the reason shouldn't concern you. You shouldn't be concerned because the institutions will need to obtain XRP from an ET if they desire it right away. If you haven't tuned into a live broadcast, they are absolutely fire, as I mentioned during the Wednesday live stream. Wednesday at 7 p.m. Easter standby moment during the live broadcast, I said clearly that the floodgates have just been opened by this. Now that these institutions have to obtain an XRP ETF, the XRP ETF will be their only source of XRP. 
people, seriously Bank of America adores XRP and Ripple. Please pay attention to this moving money. At the Bank of America, customers now transfer 50% of their money digitally. The first part of this is nothing new, the second is whether or not we want anonymous money to exist in the first place. This is a policy question that concerns size, scope, and quantity, and that's where you start to see people argue. Do you think we do? Do you believe we desire it? I believe the reason the $100 bill was the largest was because I don't think you want it. The bills were designed to generate revenue. More challenging to move without going through a verifiable system, and I believe that's a lesson that many economies have learned over time as they have lowered their denominations to increase the economy's transparency. The capacity to track, locate, and have money come in we and the industry perform that enormous amount of AML and KYC work, and that helps. You discover a plethora of fascinating things. And that's crucial for upholding the law and other things, so in my opinion, that's not good. Conjecture I'll give it some thought and let others argue it, but I believe you already know. The notion of digital currency is not new. Digital transfer is handled by the wire system. My goal is to identify this Bank of America patent. As we all know, the company has partnered with Ripple and created multiple patents utilizing on-demand liquidity. When Alex Cobb first revealed the partnership between the two companies on Twitter, an employee of Ripple actually DM'd him to let him know that they weren't quite ready to make the announcement yet because they were working on a large marketing campaign. We won't forget that, people. Please take down the tweet and the article. He did it. Alder now claims that Ripple will pay a fine. Of 15 million during 30 days, as seen on Crypto World. This is the 6 minute extended version. I simply want you to hear a little portion of this, don't worry, we won't be listening to the entire 6 minutes. Because of what Stewart says here, they will pay the fine within 30 days. As soon as that P is paid, however, the matter is resolved because both Ripple and the SEC must sign the dotted line on the judge's final decision for them to consent to incur the fine. Horace, as soon as this money is given out, people, this is really bullish. That brings an end to the last boom. Don, he wrote that you truly respect that. In response to a judge fining Ripple $125 million for violating federal securities rules through institutional sales of XRP, he branded the SEC's request for $2 billion in fines and penalties a ridiculous demand. How do you feel about the $125 million fine that the court imposed? Eventual result of an extensive and drawn-out court case against the SEC, we're incredibly pleased with it. When the SEC sued Ripple for the first time nearly four years ago, the company declared that it would fight the lawsuit on behalf of the whole cryptocurrency market, the administration, and the SEC, it's evident that this chair opposes cryptocurrencies, and they've launched a legal battle against them. I believe they lost on every front, including their attempt to prove that a token is inherently worthless. The court categorically rejected the notion that XRP is a security in this instance, ruling that a token is never a security in and of itself. Similar to how a gold bar is never a security that's the fundamental clarity that we seek. It can package commodities or virtual currencies and sell them as securities, but they aren't sectors in and of themselves. In this instance and the demonstration that XRP is not security in and of itself. Is what the judge decides the national law? It was discovered by me that some past sales, starting about 2015, were packaged with highly skilled third parties. If you would like to hear the rest of the interview, kindly indicate that they should have been registered under the security look. I'll probably share this video and give it a little retweet as well. Please go listen to it. Pay close attention. Regarding what Sridala is saying here, which is really bullish news, all we are waiting for right now, people, is for the money to be transferred. Once it is, everything is finished. Goodbye, since the SEC has decided to file an appeal after being unable to accept the money. Okay, consider people, that's where we're focusing. You ought to be as thrilled as I am. Optimistic days to come and a fantastic finish the year 2025 is off to a fantastic start.